This next place we're going to film is mad. Oh, the smell! We're in the state of Oaxaca and we're here to eat. This Oaxaca series is all about sharing with you some of the most delicious food in this amazing state. Oaxacan food is some of the most unique in Mexico. This is our fourth video from Oaxaca and we're taking you into the heart of Tlacolula Market. This weekly country market is one of the biggest in Oaxaca state. We join the locals at the grill in the smoky meat hall and barbecue up our own meat feast and share with you a famous Oaxacan specialty. The local food culture here is heavily influenced by Oaxaca's indigenous peoples and here you'll find food that you won't see anywhere else in the country. In this huge Mexico series we'll show you some of Mexico's tastiest food from local favorites to traditional recipes. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas and I'm Sheena and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. The town of Tlacolula, which is about 40 minutes outside of Oaxaca City, holds a massive market day. It's one of the biggest traditional market days uh, in Oaxaca State, together with Ocot Land, which we filmed a video at the other day. We'll link it up there. This place is just a riot of colour and noise and delicious food. So what we're going to do today is just wander around the market, uh, eat some really, really tasty Oaxacan specialties um, and show you around a bit. Tlacolula Market is a really great place to sample Oaxacan specialties and I've just spotted a real Oaxacan specialty. It is Tejate. Now Tejate is a drink that um, is from the Mixtec and Zapotec peoples. It dates back to the pre-Hispanic times. It's a really unique, really special and it's quite rare to find outside of Oaxaca. So let's go and grab a bowl. Hola, buenos días. Un tazón, por favor. Cacao. Sí, gracias. Sí, gracias. All right, so I've got my bowl of tejate. Now, the lady here is actually preparing the tejate. What she's doing is she's mixing up a paste. The paste is made up of uh, toasted maize flour, there's cacao, there's uh, flor de cacao, which is a white flour from this region, there's uh, the toasted pit of the mame fruit. She's basically elbow deep mixing it up, mixing up that paste, and then she's going to mix it with water, and that's how it gets this consistency. So you can see here it's got um, a watery base and then on top it's got this foamy sort of um, floaty uh, curd like stuff and that's the flor de cacao, the flour which has just risen up to the top. Let's just give this thing a taste. So it comes in a really um, traditional bowl too. Mm. Oh, it's such a unique flavor. It's really earthy, it's nutty, it's a little bit floral and you can really taste that cacao. It's coming through beautifully. Mmm. The foamy bits on the top, the flor de cacao, almost have a creamy texture. This is really delicious and as I was saying before it's quite rare so you don't find this fish outside of Oaxaca. It's a, um, a drink that's passed down from generation to generation through the family so every sort of recipe differs and it's really neat to be able to share this type of food with you because it's so rare. This bowl of tahata isn't really just food, it represents community and family and history and culture especially because it dates back thousands and thousands of years. It's a real honour to be able to share this type of food with you. I love the atmosphere of these tejate stands because everyone just sort of swings by, grabs a bowl of tejate and then downs it and gets on with their day. Such a great snack. Muchas gracias. Sí, andele. Ah, delicioso. Gracias. Hasta luego. That was just so refreshing and such a unique flavour. Love it. Thank you. 
as well as the outside areas that take over some of the streets of this town. This market has some incredible inside areas, so some more permanent buildings, and it is full on in here. The air is full of smoke, there's music being played, beautiful colors everywhere, there's fruit, there's veg, there's clothing, anything you can imagine, but there is a ton of food, so all of this area is food. to the main food hall and up ahead there's uh, Barbacoa Alley really. There's about 10 or 15 stalls all selling Barbacoa de Chivo which is a slow roasted goat so it's cooked in a pit covered with um, a lot of margay leaves. So I think what we're going to do is head to Adolfa which is the first stall here. We've heard that um, Doña Adolfa has been cooking her Barbacoa for a really long time, like something like 50 years and you can see the pot of barbacoa and it looks sensational. Hola, buenas tardes. Barbacoa de chivo. De chivo, Whoa, it looks amazing. So it is, oh, muchas gracias. So this lovely lady is giving me a taste of the barbacoa de chivo. Oh man. It's melting in your mouth. We've got to eat here. We're just going to nab a seat, a seat at this stall. This is really frenetic. There's so much going on. There's so many people here. It's a great atmosphere. Really, really exciting. Tacos, por favor, y un consomme. Sí. Gracias. Alright, our food has arrived. We ordered a bowl of soup, but we also need some tortillas. And this lovely lady has just shown up with some tortillas. Uh, dos, uh, dos tortillas, por favor. Gracias, señora. So she's got her big pile of tortillas, and they'll be perfect with the consomme. Wow, they're nice and warm. Oh gosh, they're gonna go really well. Cuánto cuesta? A lot going on. The musicians are playing. People are so I really like it. So we got the spread of the, the two tacos, so they've got the barbacoa inside and I think some salad and whatnot. And we also got this consomme which is full of that goat meat. Look at the meat, super soft in there and that nice rich looking soup. I just actually want to have a little bit of that soup. Oh, come on, that is so good. Full of flavor, but let's get into that properly. So we'll get one of these tortillas that we just got from that lady. Boom, all the soup over the top. Really moisten it up. And now on the table, we've got a bunch of stuff that we can put with this. So I'm here for some salad. So let's get a little bit of um, coriander and cabbage on there. Some lime, and the lime all over the top. And got a bit of salsa here, so this is a salsa verde, so we'll just dump a whole lot of salsa verde on there. Now that is going to be heaven. Oh my god. Mm. Wow, oh that meat is so soft. And then you've cooked in a whole lot of spices and you've got that soup in there with the meat. The meat is retaining its flavor. So it's got a lovely um, flavor of goat, which is really nice because the, the, the true like depth of all the spice and the chili, that's coming from the soup. The meat's just not taking over. The meat tastes great. Okay, so we ordered uh, two tacos as well. So I just want to sort of see what's in here. So I'm just going to unroll it. All right, so whoa, look at that. This is like a perfect amount of goat meat in there. It's really chunky. There's also some of the um, cabbage and the coriander. What I'm going to do is just chuck a ton of lime on the inside there. And then also put some of that uh, Salsa Verde, right, roll this baby back up. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Holy moly. That goat is just packed 
with the flavor. Even though I popped the salsa verde and the lime juice on there, the, the majority of the flavor is coming from that goat. It's completely full of, um, like Thomas said, real meat flavor. It's very savory, it's got a real depth. It's so good. This next place we're going to film is mad. Look at all the smoke in the air. So these are all butcher shops along here. There's all grills in the middle and you can buy your own meat, cook your own meat and vegetables. Far out, look at this. It looks like some sort of women end of the world sort of things going on. There's so much smoke in here. This is crazy. This is going to be real fun. So each of these stalls is owned separately. So we're just going to pick a random stall and buy some meat and then hopefully commandeer a grill. I can see some intestines, there's um, uh, chorizo sausage, there's tasajo which is thinly pounded uh, cured beef. It is so frenetic in here. So we are um, ba basically in the same building so just over the way is where we had the barbacoa. We've literally walked like 10 meters and we're in this huge meat uh, hall. So let's go get some of our meat. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Estás ajo? Sí, a medio kilo. Sí, gracias. Sí. So I've ordered half a kilo of tasajo. So tasajo is really thinly pounded beef steak, and then it's cured in salt, and then you just cook it on the grill. So I think the lady's just going to give me a basket with the meat in it, and then I. I suppose we just go and find ourselves a grill. Alright, so we've ordered our half kilo of tasajo and the lady is just slicing it up into um, manageable uh, slices for us to put on the grill. So it's going into this basket here. All of the other stuff looks really good too. There's trepa intestines, there's the chorizo, there's pork, all sorts of cuts. There's even beef ribs. They look real good. Muchas gracias. Uh, there are lots of different ladies wandering around with vegetables and whatnot so you can buy uh, spring onions and onions and chilies and whatnot to put on the grill as well to cook up together with your beef so maybe if we see a roving um, veggie vendor we'll grab some vegetables as well so one of the sellers came around with some onions or some sabietas this is mad i'm just getting run over by this giant trolley this place is crazy it's like nowhere we've ever seen in the world there is so much meat on these grills so many people here it's it's unreal incredible. it's incredible i can't wait to get our meat on there this is like nothing we've ever seen this is great what I might do is chuck these cebollitas on right in the middle of the grill because they're going to take a lot longer than the steak to cook. I think we should make it clear that we have no idea what's going on here. It's, it's quite confusing. <laughs> it's super fun, but it's really confusing. So we've now managed to get a little space on the grill. We have absolutely no idea where we're meant to eat this food. Um, we don't know how long the onions are going to take to cook. We don't know how everyone keeps track of who's theirs because people seem to be coming and going. It is wild. I'm loving it. This is great fun. So I've cleaned this sort of corner of the grill right here. Meat's cooking out really nicely. The onions are looking good. This is going to be a real feast. The tasajo is looking pretty good. I'm pretty much going to take it all off the grill now. I think the onions just need a tiny little bit longer. Oh, the smell! It's just phenomenal. The best I've seen is muy rico, tú. Sí. They're just chucking some more, more uh, charcoal under the grill. Oh, it is super hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> this lady next to me is just laughing at me because she's saying, yes, you are sweating real bad. <laughs> ah, gracias. So we've got a bunch of tasajo and our cebollitas and now we've got to find some more stuff to go with it and also a place to sit and eat. I'm just going to put my tongs back. <laughs> I have no idea 
what I'm doing. I think we've got to go and find some um, sauces and maybe some avocados and tortillas. We'd be perfect with this lot. <laughs> we asked where we should eat this of some of the ladies who are hanging around. They sort of said to just um, come this way. So <laughs> off we go. <laughs> oh, no, gracias. We're just picking up some avocados to go with our meat. Perfecto, gracias. There's a lady here selling some tortillas, so they'll go perfectly with this. Uh, cinco, pe cinco. Cinco pesos. Uh, cinco, uh, cinco pesos. Gracias. Son a cuatro por diez. Sí. Perfecto. Which is gracias. So I got five pesos worth, which gives me a bunch of tortillas, so that'll be perfect. Sí. Gracias. All right, people are just leaning up against these empty stalls and tucking in, so I think we're just going to do the same. So we've got a bunch of tortillas, uh, we've got two avocados, we've got some cebollitas, and we've got some castajo. So it's going to make a fine meal. I think actually the only thing missing is probably some salsa to bind it all together. I popped up to the uh, end of the main hallway and there was a stand which was selling all sorts of um, accompaniments to go with this type of meal. So I got us a salsa roja, which is a red salsa, and that's just going to tie everything perfectly together, I reckon. We came very prepared. We brought our Swiss army knife with us so we can cut into the aguacate or the avocados. Let's just, this one's perfectly ripe, so let's get into this one here. Whoa, it's like slicing through butter. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect avocado. Okay, now I'll pop that knife down. I'm gonna rip into one of these tortillas. I think I'm gonna go just half. And then squeeze some of the aguacate on there. All right, mush that around, perfect. Get a slice of this tasajo, so it's really thinly cut, so it's been cured um, in salt and then obviously cooked over that grill. I'm just going to pop some of this salsa roja, roja on, so the red salsa. So it'll be made out of chilies and onion and probably some tomatoes. Oh yeah, it's going to be real good. Okay, now just roll this up. It's a feast for a king. All right. Tasajo is good. It has got a beautiful salty flavour. It's perfectly seasoned because it was cured in salt and so it's very, very flavoursome. It was really tender, which I think is testament to my very good cooking skills. And that, that beautiful avocado is creamy. That salsa roja has a really sharp chili kick. It's quite spicy. Oh, this is real good. This atmosphere is crazy. So what we're leaning on to eat this is one of the butcher's stands, but it's closed at the moment. So you can kind of just take over any perch that's available to you to eat your food. So there's people lined up all here on every closed stand eating. Still grills all around us. The amount of smoke in the air is crazy. My eyes are burning from this. It is such an experience. It, like I said before, it is like nothing else we've ever done anywhere in the world. I've got a little tortilla made up and let's see how we manage with these onions. I think they're gonna be a little bit underdone because they weren't on there for too long. Mm. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Not too squishy, but still nice and crunchy on the inside. That adds a lot of flavor. What an experience. Absolutely and utterly wild. This Oaxaca series is all about sharing with you some of the delicious.